Brand assets are built from an organized front, right? So let's break down the core assets of a single so you can kind of value them properly, all right? Coming up next on the Music Money Makeover Show. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. This is episode two, season two, all right? So quick thing, um, I promise you, you're gonna love what you're gonna see here. And if you clicked here, you wanted to watch it anyway. So go ahead and click the subscribe tab below and hit the notification bell. And it, you know, hey, look, go ahead and hit a like as well, all right? So today we're gonna jump into the assets of the single. Now, last week, you know, we were talking about the brand and the brand assets and the value of both. Today, we're putting a value on the asset. So now we can talk about building that value more in depth, okay? Let's jump into the first thing, the composition. The composition is the first piece of the single. Check it, we gotta write the song first. We gotta program the beat. We gotta write the music out. That's what we have to do first. All right, now once we do that, let me tell you what you can do with it. Okay, so now you have the lyric and melody and it's written out and you have the composition written out on, you know, notation paper if you're that detail or manuscript paper. From that, we can now perform it live, all right? That's about all we can do with the composition. Anything else, we really can't do anything really, you know, with it because if we, let's say you and I are sitting here writing a song. We're writing a song, we're feeding off each other, we're doing it, you know, in the moment. Everything is happening live. Everything is happening right now. That's all we get from the composition, a live performance or enactment of what we wrote, okay? But in order to put a true value on that, we have to record it. Now, wait before, just, just before we get into that, let's talk about how much this is worth right now. Okay, so without a copyright on this song, I wanna set the tone. You yourself are a do-it-yourself artist and you're a nobody. You have no following, no fan base. You haven't even done an open mic show at all. You might have sung for your friends and family, but that's about it, okay? So the value of this is worth zero, zilch, nada, nothing, okay? And the only thing that it's worth was the time that you put in it. And you can't really put a value on that because you're nobody. So let's copyright this, all right? When we copyright this song, we turn it into a, technically a legal asset at this point, all right? So once we do that, we can now say that the value of this song is worth $55 at least. That's how much the copyright costs for that. The process of that was 55 bucks, okay? Now we wanna increase this value. So let's make a record, let's record it, let's produce the record, all right? So we'll set the 55 bucks apart, uh, aside and then let's dig into the recording. Now for the recording of this, we're gonna use what we call form SR or for the sound recording, okay? So when we use this form, it's gonna protect the sound recording of the composition. Just wanna be clear, the composition is technically the song but it's not a song per se in tangible form until we record it. Now, let's take a break from the copyright form, technical jargon and all this stuff for a second and jump into the value of the song. So we have the composition first, right? And then we're going to now record it. But in order to record it, we must get it Record it, we must get it mixed, and we must get it mastered. We're just, we're talking about the true process of the single to get it from zero to delivered, right? So we spent, let's say, 400 bucks to record it, and we spent 500 bucks to uh, mix it, and then we also spent 100 bucks to master it, all right? All in all, we did about $1,000 in production cost to produce this composition. Now, on top of that, we must copyright the sound recording as well. So it, the composition belongs to us and the sound recording belongs to us. Now, bonus tip, bonus tip, with the new portal on copyright.gov, you can copyright your composition and the sound recording on one form. Yes, that's right, one form, not $55 for the composition and $55 for the sound recording. You can put them together on one form if you are the sole owner of the work, right? So it can't be like, this record company A, record company A, and then songwriter A and B, right? It has to be 
you yourself have to be the record company and you yourself have to be the, the composition, the rights holder for the composition, okay? If it's two different parties, it's not going to work. It has to belong to the same party, all right? That's a quick tip. Let's jump more in depth to the sound recording. We now have a completed production of a song and it's copywritten. And so now the receipt that we have on the song or the receipts right now is $1,055. Now from this point, we can not only perform the song live, but we can also play it live. Now not playing it like a guitar, but it can be played as a performance like on Spotify, on Pandora and retail stores and all this stuff. Now our song can live outside of us performing it as solely just us on stage. You can go put it in different places where it can be performed and you can get paid for that, all right? It goes to your PRO, it's BMI, CSAC, ASCAP, GMR, all these places. So can Jazz Rack, Samro, all these places around the world, okay? But we can also do a couple more things with the sound recording here. We can put these sound recordings into TV, movies, video games, all of these other purposes, it can be repurposed for that, all right? So now that we have a recording, we can do so much more. It can be put into things like greeting cards. I mean, come on, the possibilities are endless for these licenses. Like, the licenses are set, but the possibility of that recording goes anywhere. As long as there's a technology that will use the recording, it has a license somewhere. Speaking of, TikTok is the newest one out. So, you know, you can see the reach that you can have with this value. Now we have a valuable product. Whereas the receipts are $1,055, yet we still are a nobody, but at least we're worth what the market says that this is worth. So now that you can understand what we did, we made our composition, our original form, more valuable with a sound recording, let's dig into the other part of this before we add more value to this, okay? Now, inside or on the cover of the single, is artwork. Most people let this go aside, all right? And I'm trying to build value from one single. We haven't even done an album yet, but from one single. If you pay a graphic artist to make artwork for you, then that belongs to you. You paid someone as a work for hire for some services. You own the work, all right? Now you must copyright that with the form VA. Now, unlike the SR form, you can't combine all this stuff into one form. So you fill out a new form, all right? It's form VA. This will protect the asset of the artwork. Now you can take this asset and you can turn it into, guess what? A t-shirt, boom, boom. Now we win it because we've taken the song and we've turned it into a recording and then we made the artwork and then we packaged the single. Then we took the artwork and then we put it on a t-shirt. Then we made merchandise, all from one single, okay? You can do this over and over again. You could put these things on cups and mugs and lighters and hoodies and hats and wherever you wanna go with the merchandise, you can do that when you have the artwork and it's yours, all right? Needless to say, if it blows up, you own the copyright to this and now you can go sue Anybody who is starting to infringe on your rights and your show, your, your shirt shows up in like Spencer's or something like that and you never gave anybody any rights to do so. Now we got some stuff cooking in the pan right now. So let's dig in a little bit more. Quick definition. This is the first one of the show. It may be the only one, but we want to talk about market value. So let me read this off to you. The market value of a product is the price point that is generally accepted by the seller and buyer. While each customer may have a different perception of the worthiness of your product, a primary goal of market research is to assess the ideal price point to balance. One, the margin, okay? The margin is that space where your profit will lie. And two, the volume, the amount of product it will take to achieve that profit margin. So volume is here. How much product do we need to achieve the profit margin, okay? Now, let's open this can of worms up and see how much the market is, is going or the going rate for a single is 
on the market. We're gonna use Spotify as our median point, okay? Spotify is basically paying people 0 0.003 cents per play. Very rough numbers, but it's in the ballpark. It's either from 0 0.002 to 0 0.003. The public is now used to streaming and it's very hard to get the public off of this. If we go to YouTube, we'll go down the scale from 0 0.003 to 0 0.001, okay? So that's how much the market will bear at YouTube. At Spotify, it's a little bit more. At Apple Music, it's a little bit more. And then Tidal, we're almost doing a penny each spin or play. That's good stuff. But that's how much the public is willing to pay for your music now. Nobody's buying CDs. People are barely buying vinyl, and that's only if they're a fan of yours. Now, what do we do about this? Because that makes us work really hard. So, we have to build a fan base. That's true anyway. You have people who want to stream your stuff, and then you have the super fan, the person who wants everything you have. Let's start with the people who just wants to stream your stuff. All right, so the people that stream your stuff are people who want to sample, all right? That's number one. The other person or the other group of people that stream your stuff are the people who are in the FOMO group, the fear of missing out, okay? Now, we have the samplers and the FOMOs. And then over here, we have the super fans. They already know who you are, what you're about, and what their music sounds like. That's different from these two people over here. They don't know who you are, what you're about, and what you sound like. They're checking you out for the samplers, and they're trying to seem cool because they feel like they're missing out once you start building your fan base. Now, if we go back to the super fan, if you understand what I said, these people know who you are, what you're about, and what your music sounds like. That means they have some type of attachment to you. And this is what you get when you start building a fan base. These people give you value. They will pay a premium price for what you have. These people don't care. They give you some value, but not enough. They're willing to give you less than a penny. They're willing to give you whatever the price is as long as it's not absurd, okay? So we miss, we as artists and producers and even record label people miss the days of CD pricing. Even single prices were cool. We could stomach that. It was a little low, but we said, fine, whatever, we're doing it digitally. At least $1.29 is still cool. It still makes sense to us. We want those prices at least. And the only way to get there is if you bundle, bundle, bundle. Now, hold that spot. Let's put a pin right there on the bundling because we have to get from the fan base to the bundling. So now we must get familiar with the public and we must engage with the public, all right? So when we wanna build the fan base, we gotta take the things that we love and push those to the forefront, even if it is music. Music will be our byproduct, but our interest will be what will build the fan base, okay? My interest is in educating about the music business, all right? I love talking to people about, hey, making sure you get your money here, get your money there, don't do this, do that. Make sure everything's in pocket so you can see maximum profit. That's my interest, all right? Other interests of mine are, hey man, I really love things like, you know, I love growing food in my backyard. I really do, okay? I like, I like CBD, hemp herb. I like that stuff, you know, it's just like, it's not too much on the hardcore side with a heavy load of THC. That's me, all right? I like cars. My favorite car is an Acura NSX. I really love that stuff. And then I love making beats. See, there's the music. I went from I love CBD, hemp, flour, and I love growing food in my backyard, and I love the Acura NSX, the old one and the new one, preferably the 2005 one, and then I also, make beats, right? I went through all of this stuff to get to the beats. Interest first, beats and music second. Even the interest of 
teaching you all about music business is an interest. I have other people who are interested in that as well. But the core product is the music. It'll eventually get there. I run a publishing company for synchronization and I make beats. That's the core layer of the onion in the middle. Everything else is the interest. We build the interest out, we come to the core right here. Now that we have people finding us and fueling off our interest, they get attached to us and they become fans of our personality. Now, since that took so long, let's go back to where we were. $1.29 is what we wanna start with, okay? But we have to bundle these things. So we bundle our interest and personality into a package that will make the public pay a premium first for our music. That's why our fan base is first and then the selling of music is second. And I will go this far to say this, don't put your stuff up for streaming until your fan base is built. And the only reason why you're gonna put your stuff up for streaming is maybe a small EP so people can understand what your music sounds like. Put your best foot forward on say five songs, put it out and let that build and you work that. In the meantime, you're gonna be telling people about your interests and your personality. And when you do that, you can build that fan base and you can start to build it pretty fast and then you let people know, hey, you know, I do music by the way, all right? We're almost done here, hang tight. We'll be finished in a few seconds. So to recap with this whole thing, it took, took a while, right? I know this, this episode may be a little bit longer than the first, but we're digging in this season. So I want you to understand, people who love your song will wanna stream it for the cheap cheap. People who love you will pay a premium for it, all right? If you can use those two sentences that I just said, and use them in building your fan base, you'll understand where the value of your music stands. Now that's how to value your music, okay? We put, we had the receipts done, we produced a song, we said our song is worth at least the $1,055 that it took to produce it, and then let's add another 200 on top for the artwork, and it's at least worth the $1,200. That's how, if we were to sell the song to someone else, to another artist, to, a publishing company, it is at least worth the production cost that we put in it and the copyright. It is at least worth $1,200. And then to the public, we break it down at 1%. Now this is gonna be another show and I will show you the power of 1%. All right, hey, that's been it for episode two of the Music Money Makeover show. If you want to follow the show, make sure you hit subscribe and click the like button and click the notification button. You can find all the links down below to find the other pages of the Music Money Makeover Show. You can keep up with us on Instagram at Music Money Makeover Show. You can keep up with us on Facebook at the Music Money Makeover Show. Make sure you like the page. And then if you have questions for us, email us at Music Money Makeover Show or email me rather at Music Money Makeover Show at gmail.com, all right? This, this has been a really great episode. I thank you all for tuning in so much. Uh, come back next week when we will dig in even deeper on these subjects, all right? See you all next time. Peace.